Hello and welcome. I am Stacy Hendry, and today I'm going to show you how to make Halloween soup. This is a delicious vegan soup that's filled with flavor, and, um, and it's a hearty, great soup for this time of year. So, as I said, I'm Stacy Hendry. Those of you who don't know me, I'm a health coach and chief flavor officer, and I teach people how to eat delicious food that you can cook quickly so that you can get on a better path to health. So today with the Halloween soup, I already have my stainless steel pot warming up here. And I'm gonna start with onions, which is the base for a lot of soups. So these onions are already chopped up and I will show you a little bit later how I do that. Um, and I'm just gonna add them to the pan. But first I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit, just a drizzle on the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna swirl it around to coat the bottom of the pan and put in my onions. So if you want to uh, reduce the fat in your food, you could use a vegetable broth instead of the um, olive oil. So this vegetable broth I'm going to use in the soup. I could put a splash in there. It will help to um, reduce the calories. And um, you know, it's another option. Coconut oil is a good choice as well. I'm just going to spread the onions over the bottom of the pan. They're already starting to sizzle. I like to cover it though. And what that does is it keeps the steam in the pan. And then you don't have to add so much oil. If you ever have the time where your onions are sticking to the bottom of the pan and you have to keep adding a little bit more oil, a little bit more oil, and that adds to the fat content and the calories of what you're cooking. So by covering it, you'll start to steam them. And if you want to caramelize them, you can take the cover off towards the end of the cooking process and get them a little caramelized. But I don't need that for this soup. I'm just trying to get them translucent. So I'm gonna let those cook for a minute. Um, the next thing I'm gonna add is celery. So I have my celery stalk here and um, I like my celery very small. So what I'm gonna do is cut down the length of the celery. I'm gonna make two cuts. So I'm, I'm already cutting it smaller. And now I'm gonna go across and I have a little extra piece that I need. So I'll give that a slice and I'm gonna just hold them together. I hold them together like this so I can get a lot. If I had needed more celery, three, four stalks, I would try to hold them all together and go across. So you can cut a lot at once. So I'm going across and now I'm getting more of a fine dice. I'm getting these little pieces of celery now. And I don't, I don't cut the rough ends off the celery because it's like a handle. So that will make it easy to hold as I go down the celery. So I can do it more quickly. A couple more slits as I get to the wider section. And voila, so then I'll just throw this away. But I didn't, I use it as a handle. So um, I'm gonna add the celery and I'm gonna add a uh, sweet potato. So these are just the uh, cubed sweet potato. So get the onion started, so it's sizzling up. And I'm also gonna add the sweet potato and the celery. Okay, so I'll stir this up. You just want to get this to start cooking. Just a little bit steamed, maybe two, three minutes. We'll cover that and let it get started. And then um, while we're waiting for that, I'll show you how I process the onions. So I had a very large onion. I cut it in half and then I cut each half into thirds. So it's, it's sixth. And I have a piece like this about this size that I'm gonna throw into the food processor. So 
I usually do probably two onions, depending on the size in my food processor. You don't want to fill it more than halfway because you need some space for it to be able to move. So I'm going to cover it. And then I hit the pulse. You don't want to turn it on because that'll just chop it into mush. I just want to pulse it. So as you can see, the onions are going to bounce up and down. And I just tap, tap, tap. So it depends on how you like them. If you like a bigger piece of onion, you could stop now. I like them more finely diced, so I'm going to go a couple more pulses. That's it, about 10, 15 pulses. Take the top off and I have these onions finely diced. So what I will do with these, show you what it looks like. So it's a nice fine dice. And I'm gonna take these onions and put them in my reusable baggie. And then I freeze them. So I already have one onion in here and I will spread it out to make a thin layer. So I'm gonna spread it out so it takes up the entire bag and get a pretty thin layer. And then I'll seal it. And I put this in the freezer, and then when I need onion, I, you can just wiggle it and crack off a piece for as much onion as you need. And when I take out the food processor, I'll probably do maybe six onions in two or three batches, and I'll fill baggies like this and keep them in my freezer. So this way for the next couple of weeks, when I need onion, I just pull this out. Pull it out, break a piece off, throw it in my pot. And I don't have to break out the food processor and wash it. I do it maybe once a month. So that is a really great time saver for onion. Okay, so I think this is about two, three minutes just to get the vegetables starting to sweat. And it looks good. So I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. I'm using, this is Trader Joe's organic low sodium vegetable broth. Um, products like this usually have a lot of salt in them, so I'll, I'll choose a low sodium because I don't like a ton of salt. I like other seasonings to flavor my food, so I usually will buy the low sodium option. So, and this is organic, and all it is if you read the ingredients is tomatoes, onions, um, celery, let's see. Carrots, um, leeks, and onions. So that's all that's in here. So this is a very clean product that I, I like using in a pinch if, I don't, if I'm not making my own broth. And then I'm gonna add the seasonings, which I've already measured out into this bowl. So what I have in here is paprika, um, Turmeric, turmeric is anti-inflammatory spice. Um, a bay leaf, basil, cinnamon. Cinnamon boosts your um, metabolism and cayenne. So cayenne pepper is a, it gives it a little kick. I just put a, maybe a pinch. You can put in as much as you like. I don't like it super spicy, but just a little hint of spice is what I do, so. You can adjust that based on what you like. So we'll put that in there. I'm gonna bring it to a boil, stir it up to get all those yummy spices mixed in and make sure the bay leaf is below the surface of the uh, broth. And then it's gonna cook for a few minutes while I uh, prepare the um, peppers and tomatoes. So here I have a regular red pepper cut in half and the, the seeds cleaned out. And I'll show you how I, uh, how I cut this. So I will cut it in thin strips and I try to cut it so that it stays in line. So this makes it so much easier to cut quickly. Now I can just turn my cutting board and go the other way. 
So because they're curled up, I'll sort of tilt my knife a little bit to get the first cut. And then the rest, just hold it in line and cut across all of the strips at the same time. So it's super fast to cut that way. And I try to do the same thing with my tomato. So then rather, rather than having to dig this stump out, I'll just go from the bottom up. So I turn the tomato on its side and I'll cut maybe half inch, usually prefer a serrated knife with tomatoes because uh, it gets through the skin, but here you go. Okay, so I've gone th three slices on the tomato, it gives me four pieces. Take these two middle ones, I keep them stacked up, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Go across about half inch, turn the cutting board and go the other way. So it's pretty quick to cube it that way. Now the bottom piece, do the same thing. Let's go across one way and then across the other way. Now, my knife is pretty sharp, so it makes it easier to do this. And now I'm gonna go across. Now here's my stump, but I'm just gonna cut around it. And then take that stump, oops, <laughs> take that stump piece out. So that made it really simple rather than digging it out. So now I have my tomatoes and peppers ready to go. Um, and the other thing I'm adding is black beans. So this is going to give it, you know, the orange from the sweet potato and the black beans give it that nice orange and black Halloween look. That's why it's called Halloween soup. Um, and the beans give you some protein and fiber. So uh, these are going to go in in a couple of minutes. Um, I do want to point out that I did buy organic uh, peppers and tomatoes and let's see everything else. These and the celery. So these are on the dirty dozen list, which are is a list of highly sprayed with pesticides, fruits and vegetables. And the higher the level of pesticide, the higher on the list. So the top 12 called the dirty dozen have the highest level of pesticides, which I don't want to eat. So I will buy those products organic. So that's peppers, tomatoes, and celery. So that's how I make my decision. Something like an onion is really low on the list. So you're not getting pesticide residue by eating a conventional onion. So then I don't necessarily splurge on the organic onion. Uh, and that's how I make my decision. So let's see, this is cooking up. Um, Turn it up a notch. Uh, let's see. So as this cooks, I will tell you, well, I think it's simmering now. Yeah, now it's up to a boil. So let's add the rest of these ingredients. The beans, the tomatoes and peppers. And, those, and that's gonna cook for an additional 10, 15 minutes. we go. So we'll bring that to a simmer again. Now this soup is great. Whenever I make soup, I make more than what I need. Keep a couple of servings out for the next couple of days and freeze the rest in single servings so that if I don't have time to cook, I can just grab the soup out of the freezer. The nice thing is you can usually pop it out of your container like an ice cube right into the pot, even frozen. And if it won't pop out, you can run a little warm water over the bottom and then you can warm it up. Just keep it on low until it starts to melt. And as you get some liquid, you can increase the heat a little bit. And within 10 minutes, you could have your meal right from the freezer. So, I mean, if you forget to take it out. So that's a handy tip. So this is going to cook for a little while, but I don't want to keep you waiting. So I'll show the one I've already prepared. So here it is. And if you can see, it's look at all those beautiful colors. The orange from the sweet potato, the red 
from the tomatoes and peppers and nice black beans makes this delicious Halloween soup. And the seasonings are, are warming spices for this time of year. And mm, gosh, it just smells so good. So uh, I hope you'll give it a try. Uh, test, try the soup yourself, see what you think. There's some versatility for sure. You can, instead of sweet potato, you could use butternut squash. Instead of black beans, you could use any beans that you want. If you wanted to add some animal protein to it, you can certainly throw in some cubed chicken in the last five, 10 minutes of cooking. You could throw some shrimp in. You could serve it over rice or a rice pasta. So you can vary it up. If you make a big pot and don't wanna eat the same thing each time, you can make some substitutions. One day serve it over rice, one day serve it over, uh, one day add some chicken to it or something. So, so be creative in your cooking. It makes it much more delicious and fun. And I hope you enjoyed this. If this was helpful to you, I hope that you'll like and share and please subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel and happy healthy eating.